Hi, welcome to uh, August, mid-August edition of According to Pete, where in this riveting episode, I'm going to continue the uh, guitar pickup system. A guitar pickup system is uh, essentially electromagnetic in nature. They don't really take vibration from the body of the guitar, they just pick up the vibration of the strings. The point of this project is to uh, bring the, the shape of a guitar body and the material of a guitar body into the equation of the guitar tone. Now last time I tried it with the ADMP 401 Breakout, which is a MEMS microphone, and it sucked badly, and I really apologize, I did not have a sound bite for it, uh, and I took some heat for that. Greg thought we were gonna take some heat for it. Yep, sure did. This time, I've done it with uh, a surface transducer. Com, C-O-M-10917, check that thing out. You hook this thing up to an audio source, and then you take it and you mount it on something solid, and then the solid object becomes the speaker. That's pretty cool. Will it also work uh, in reverse? They don't really intend for it to work in reverse, but it does. And so I've got it set up with a different op amp circuit, a different power supply, and I'm going to talk about that circuit, and I'm going to show you what I did, and I'm going to play. And I'm probably going to be really embarrassed, but there you are. I'm going to do it. This is our surface transducer, and it is fed into this circuit. This is a differential configuration of an amplifier. It's also called an instrumentation amplifier. Let's talk about op amps in general. Okay, uh, we've covered this to some degree before. Um, what they are doing, right, is they're amplifying the difference between these two inputs. There's an inverting input and there's a non-inverting input. Now, why you do that is because you can set them up to uh, give you something called common mode rejection. What's that? This thing amplifies difference, right? So if you've got a thing, like a service transducer, out in the field someplace, and it gets hit by noise, the idea is that the cable or the wire, which is represented by these very two short segments, um, gets hit by the same wave front, induces a spike, big spike there, and a big spike there, in the same polarity. But because this amplifies the difference, that junk gets filtered out, and it doesn't get to the output. Cool, huh? In a differential configuration like this, and I'll, I'll explain it much better, I hope, uh, you get uh, the obvious benefits of common mode rejection. The, the thing that I might be struggling with a little bit, and I haven't fully convinced myself of, is that if you run this thing, like in this configuration, you have to run this with a, a positive voltage and a negative voltage. Now, I'm pretty convinced that you can actually do this with a single positive supply. You'd have to set this reference, right? Th this reference is set to like the midpoint between plus VCC and minus VCC, which is basically ground. But you could also do this to, say, a reference voltage. So if my supply voltage is two, five volts, I have like a regulator or something set at two and a half volts, and I can still get this out. I'm not convinced that you don't get the, the uh, benefits of common road rejection without the two supply setup but somehow this feels more right to me. So somebody's gonna have to step in here and go, no, Pete, this is why this works so much better. One thing I can tell you is that set up in this configuration, I don't have to AC couple this. If this thing was in fact referenced to a much lower voltage, you'd have to AC couple this thing in. Uh, and that's a pain uh, because then I have to start worrying more about how uh, a coupling cap is going to be affected with the inductor because we talked about resonance and things like that before once upon a time. Let's talk about the gain of this thing. When you set one of these up, what you've got is an inverting op amp and a non-inverting op amp smooshed together. As long as, and you'll see like, okay, so the, the inverting amp, you see like this guy and this guy, and the gain is 100K over 2.2K, right? Okay, now when you set it up like this, and I'm gonna shortcut this for you because the math is, it's just algebra, but it's kind of ugly. As long as this resistor, which goes to ground, and the feedback resistor back here are the same value, and these two guys are the same value, the gain will boil down to this, uh, which is the 100K over the 2.2K times V2 minus V1. And what I'm calling V2 is like the voltage input here, 
and the voltage input here is V1, okay? Now, in truth, because of this setup, it's, it's really effectively the same thing. It's just a phase difference, right? Um, so you say you've got like half the signal that this produces here, half the signal that this produces here, and they are 100 degrees out of phase. So it's effectively the same thing. When this boils down, you've got a gain of about 45.5, okay? Times the difference that's going in here. That's what's gonna be out of here. And because of the bipolar supply, it's gonna be referenced to zero volts, which is cool because then I can DC couple it to the next stage, which is just a buffer stage that goes out to the op, or not the op amp, the amp, the amplifier, right? So I've set this up with a 10K here, standard thing that we got on the website. Pot goes here, this is a non-inverting buffer op amp, uh, and that goes out. Now you remember the last time uh, I forgot to put the feedback cap in, this is to keep the thing from oscillating at high frequency. This is one I had on the shelf, 68 picofarad in parallel with 100K, you calculate it out with one over two pi RC, and it comes out to about 23.4 kilohertz. I'm, I'm well past the audio range, and eh, that's just gonna, it'll, it'll squash the high frequency oscillations, should it want to do this. As I'm standing here thinking about this a little more, I do believe I could have set this up on a single polar supply, just positive voltage and ground, set this to a different reference halfway between ground and VCC, and I still would not have had to AC couple this thing. I think it would have been just fine. And I would have still gotten the benefits of common mode rejection. However, because I did this, the, the positive voltage and the minus voltage, I was able to get rid of a coupling cap here and a coupling cap here, which is to say between the two stages and to the, to the out. I, because this is referenced to ground, I don't have to AC couple this thing to the output. And it's not a big deal, but I cut down on a few components. The next question would be, okay, Pete, how do you set up a bipolar supply? I went to our storefront and I got uh, one of these little hobby lithium polymer two cell lipo battery. Uh, one of the ones that's like the high current output. Well, that thing's got a charge jack on it that is basically zero volts, 3.7 volts, and 7.4 volts. So we got a battery here and a battery here, and they're connected, and this is, this is the main cell, right? So you got this thing, that's the cell, and then you've got a charge jack. <laughs> charge jack. You've got this, you make your ground, you've got this, you make your V minus, and you've got this, you make your V plus. I didn't even bother regulating this. I just plugged it straight in. I filtered it, I'll give you that. So I got a cap here, right? And this is like, I think I made it 100 microfarad. And I got another cap here, 100 microfarad. I'll be honest with you, I don't know for certain how much noise a battery, I'm, I'm pretty sure there is, I didn't look it up. I'm pretty sure that there is some noise associated with the chemical action of discharging a battery like this or any other battery. And I probably should have uh, decoupled this with a couple of, uh, a couple, 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 uh, with a couple of ceramics as well for low ESR. Didn't do it. Um, just have these. I do have the op amp decoupled with a couple of point ones. So I do have it farther away from the battery, but you know, I didn't do it here. This configuration just like this, straight to V plus and V minus. I don't even have a switch and it's working out pretty well. This op amp, right, if you check the spec on the LM358, which this is, uh, it will go down to a bipolar supply of like plus and minus one and a half volts. Well, I'm running, in a charged configuration, I'm running plus and minus 4.2. So I'm, I'm well above where I need to be. We made another video a couple of days ago where I was in the middle of creating this circuit and I tested and I, I got a waveform on my scope and I wanna show it to you. Let's show that and then we'll go into the demo. This is the circuit as it stands right now. Um, and I just wanted to point some of this stuff out to you before I show you the waveform that is making me go, oh, this is awesome. This battery makes a really cool uh, bipolar supply because it comes with this funky charge jack, right? All the multi-cell lipos do. Um, and the pin in the middle is like the, the one cell and you get, you know, minus 3.7, zero and 3.7 effectively, or 4.2 when it's fully charged. Uh, differential amplifier, got a couple of LEDs on here. I don't have a switch on it, eh, big deal. I will tell you that when I first wired this up, 
uh, it was sitting on the negative rail. It was sitting at 3.7 volts minus on the output of this thing because I had the power wi uh, wired up backwards. But I wired it up normally, did not fry the op amp, and now it's functional. Check this out. I'm just gonna hit um, an A. Now, to the untrained eye, that may look like garbage. That's actually a pretty clean waveform. There's no, there's no railing, which is to say there's no clipping on the signal. Um, and that's A, and, and on my, my, uh, my deflection here, my, my vertical deflection is uh, 0.2 volts uh, per division. I don't know if you can see that or not, but when I strike it, I'm getting, I'm getting pretty good. I'm getting like a volt peak to peak, and that's, you know, it's, that's just with the gain set on the differential at about, I don't know, something like 45-ish. Um, so that's, that's pretty good. Now for, for all of you naysayers, right? Oh, you're not going to get low enough frequency. Well, there's the E and I'm buzzing a little bit when I hit it. I will grant you the amplitude looks a little bit lower, but that's still pretty workable. And the A is good. The D is good. Although it's not quite D cause it sounds like crap. Anyway, um, so the D's bigger, the, the, the G's eh, a little bit smaller, so there seems to be some resonance going on here. Yeah, and there's the E. So, but, I mean, I've got a pretty, pretty good workable um, dynamic range here. I'm pretty happy with it. There's my highest E when you bend it up and you get all metal and you stick your tongue out. So there you go. So here's the circuit. I did not cut the, the, the PCB down because I'm gonna mount a bunch of other junk to it. Um, I only have, so far, one, I hope you can see this over here. I only have one of the service transducers available right now. So I'm gonna take this thing, I'm gonna tweak it off and I'm gonna move it around and probably pop my amp or something while I'm doing it. I got a pot. You saw it on the circuit, it works. There is no reverse uh, polarity protection, so if I put this in backwards, these two caps are gonna explode. As you can see, I got the high end turned down and I got the low end turned up so that I can get mm, a little more of a uh, rounded sound because this, this really does not get the low end the way I'd really like it to. There are a few positions that I've put this thing into. This one is on the far end. <laughs> Sounds pretty thin, doesn't it? Now, I'm gonna try on the other peak. Distinctly thinner and more obnoxious sound. So yeah, so there's that. Now, here's what it sounds like on the headstock. Arguably worse and harder to play around that chord. But if you were serious about doing that, you'd find a better way to string the chord. I love the hives. The system, in effect, does work. Doesn't sound particularly great yet. I tried this last night before I came in on a different guitar. That particular guitar, uh, it's a Schecter. It's not the Schecter I had sitting on my bench the one time. It's a different one. Made of mahogany. It's got a uh, set neck, right? It's, it's not a bolt-on like the Jackson piece of garbage. Don't get all uppity about Jackson. I have another Jackson I really like. And I tried it on the top. Eh, it sounded kind of thin. I tried it around the backside. It sounded kind of thin. I put it on the headstock. It sounded really good like a really well sound well rounded sound and i mean i can i can adjust this with the amp but this thing right on the headstock sound best hey let's jam one in the middle there and see what that's all about hey that's actually pretty good The Who. Uh, that's the best sound I've had out of it so far. So that's where we're gonna stop today. For next time, I'm gonna add uh, at least one other service transducer. 
uh, possibly, probably two, so that I can uh, better, <laughs> better at all, mix the sound together to try and get uh, even better tone. And uh, I hope to have the beginnings or the middles of having the light LED display, whatever that ends up being. Until next time. This is Pete signing off. Keep the questions coming. You can send them to feedback at sparkfun.com with according to Pete in the subject line. Keep the comments coming. Comments go in the section below. And I'll see you at the beginning of uh, September. Bye. One of the things I failed to uh, consider is with this new method of picking up sound, maybe it's going to make a sound that nobody wants to hear.